Hey everybody, Dylan from Noble Records coming at you with another video. Uh, this is a recent finds video. I've been trying to do these more frequently so I have more time to talk about each record, but every time I have too many. So that's the way it is. Got some super grails in this one, some super nice stuff, some stuff I've been wanting for years, some blue stuff, some psych stuff, some prog stuff, so stay tuned. Uh, first one I want to talk about is so excited. Uh, this is the Randy Holden Population 2. Uh, Noble Records exclusive yellow vinyl pressing of this with uh, autograph, all that stuff. Uh, long story short, I met Randy um, about a year and a half ago, and uh, long, long, long story. I'm going to do another video about him probably next week. Uh, but just, it was a long road to get this album done, but I uh, teamed up with uh, Rad and Easy Records to get this done. Really, really sweet. Stay tuned for that video. That's going to be cool, but I've been waiting for that for a long time. So very exciting to finally get that. Um, next one. This is one. This is a, this is this one's insane. Um, a guy that follows me on Instagram was like, "Hey, I got this really rare record. Just wondering if I could bring it to your shop and trade it in." So he drove from like Georgia and uh, bought a bunch of stuff, but traded this in. I was super stoked to have it. This is. Uh, the Scorpio Brothers, Ico, Ico, I guess that's what it's, how you pronounce it, but uh, it's on Thimble Records. This is a scorcher of an album. I this is so mind blowing. Um, it it's never been repressed. It's really really crazy. Um, I'll let you hear just a clip of it. Check it out. <laughs> Mind-blowing stuff, right? So uh, this is 1974. Um, half the band was from New York. Half the band was from Los Angeles. Um, and they did this just killer. It sounds like Santana, uh, but more hard rock with some synth and prog elements. It is nuts. This is an amazing record. Uh, when I put this on for the first time, it totally melted my brain. It was so amazing. So this is a huge find. Um, and it's really cool because... I didn't even know what it was, and then he was like, "Hey, you, you know, you know what this is?" And I was like, "No," which is intriguing, you know. And um, when I listened to it, man, it just blew my mind. So that's a killer find. Uh, next one, this one I'm super excited about. Um, a friend of mine uh, runs a record store, in California called Record Jungle, um, and he had this, and I nabbed it from him real quick. This is Asterix. This is an original German press of this. So Asterix was a German band, but you know them probably as Lucifer's Friend. Um, so this album came out in 1970. Uh, this is seminal early hard rock, kraut rock. Um, great, great, great stuff. Uh, but before that, they went through a bunch of different name changes and stuff like that, and member turnover and all that stuff. But they got the final lineup that was the special sauce. And they did this album. So this is actually the same exact band as Lucifer's Friend, but they didn't change the name yet. So this is Asterix. This is really hard to find. Original German press. Super scarce. This is a grail. Excited to have that one. But this is, um, you know, like I said, early hard rock but with some prog elements in there. But very, very good hard rock. Um, if, you, if you like that type of thing, the early 70s hard rock, this is really incredible, incredible record. And then also, you know, Lucifer's Friend is too. I've had this for a while, but that's a great record. Oh, man. Let's get in. Let's get in. I don't know if it's okay with you. Well, but, well we're going to get into some blue, blues grails here in a minute because I've got some blues grails. But I'll go ahead and show you some other stuff. So this is a band called Farmyard. This is like a psychedelic band on Polydor. Uh, this is not what the cover is supposed to look like. Um, the cover is basically this plastic bag with a handle. And a lot of them did not survive. Um, very, very fragile cover. Uh, and so a lot of them just come and play white sleeves. And this was the inner sleeve that was in it. So the record's not in perfect shape, but these go for quite a lot of money. A friend of mine knows I'm a big fan of Psych. He uh, traded to me for some stuff. But Farmyard, that's a really cool record if you can find that probably on YouTube to listen to. 
Uh, this is another just killer record. Jim Sullivan. Uh, this is a really interesting story. Uh, so Jim Sullivan was this uh, singer-songwriter, early 1970s, and just uh, was fun he was phenomenal. You know, uh, didn't make it, you know, as a lot of them didn't. You know, and uh, he had a lot of ties in, like, Hollywood, and there's a lot of actors that he knew and stuff like that. Uh, he was playing at clubs. He was really doing well, gigging around locally, but he couldn't catch fire on a national level to get a record done. So he did his first record uh, called UFO, uh, which uh, I think Vinyl Me Please did a reissue of it. So a lot of people know about it now. But and I know Light in the Attic did a reissue of it. But then after he did that record... Um, he that didn't get much traction. It was a private press deal, and then this label, uh, Country City Records, picked it up and did a reissue of it. So this is actually the same album as UFO, but the track listings are a little bit different. But um, let's see, there's the label. But anyways, so shortly after this, maybe a couple years later, he did um, he did a record, just a self titled called Jim Sullivan. It didn't really do much, so he decided he was going to try his luck in Nashville. So he drove out to Nashville. Uh, he left his family, his wife and kid at home. He said, listen, y'all, I'm going to run it to Nashville. And once I catch fire there and I, and I start making it there, then you guys can come join me. It's early. Got to have my coffee. So anyways, on the way to Nashville, he stops in New Mexico. And he stops at some, for some reason, no one knows why. He stopped at these people's ranch. The people that own the ranch don't even know why he stopped there. Uh... Someone saw him walking away from his car. They didn't know if he was out of gas or whatever. Uh, his gas, he was not out of gas. His records, all his merch stuff, his guitar, everything was still in his car. And no one ever saw him again. He totally disappeared. Some people say he got abducted by UFO. He sang about UFOs, you know. Uh, he was kind of a weird dude. Uh, eight months later, they found a body that matched his height um, and tattoos and stuff like 200 miles away. But the police said it wasn't him, but they didn't say who it was. So there's a lot of speculation on what happened if there somebody murdered him or like it's a weird, weird story, but no one ever no one actually knows what happened. So that's that's a bit of a weird story. But that's the story of Jim Sullivan. And it's a really great record if you can listen to it online. Uh, it's the same as UFO. What you'll find is UFO, but that's what it is. Anyways, this is another really rare private press deal. This is uh Crash Coffin. Uh, this is not a common record. I'd never heard of it. A friend of mine, he was at an auction and got this record. Um, it was the only record in the batch that looked any good. This is uh, this dude. He his name like he that's it's a guy. He calls himself Crash Coffin. He made five hundred records, but then he ran out of budget, and so he couldn't get sleeves made. Like and so he just got these white sleeves and drew each cover himself. So that's pretty cool. So he, he drew that cover himself. But this is a, there's some really good hard rock tracks on here. There's a couple like goofy tracks on here. It's a private press weird record, um, but it's still pretty cool. And I really like the hard rock ones on here. And there's some blues, you know, electric blues licks and stuff like that. But this is a really cool, uh, it's early 70s. Can't remember exactly what year it is, um, but yeah, really cool record. So I got one more private press to show you. This is uh, Jake. The band's called Jake. Uh, this is the Jake album dedication. I heard about this a while back. Um, this is a band from uh, Madison, Wisconsin, I believe. But anyways, this is a weird record. <laughs> Basically, uh, Jake is the dog that they write some songs about. Uh it's on Banana Records. Uh, tough to find. This is a really, really rare record. Um, and there's not a lot of information about it online. I don't. I couldn't find much about it. Uh, but I heard about it a while back. A friend of mine had a copy, and I was like, hey, if you ever want to let it go, let me know. And he kind of wanted a lot for it, and I didn't really know what it was. So I was like, well, whatever. And then time went on, and uh, I got back in touch with him. He's like, yeah, I'll go ahead and sell that. So he, he gave me a really good deal on it. And I love private press stuff like this. Well, what I love about this is that it kind of takes you back to the age of crate digging to where you actually have to have the record in your hand to hear it. You know, and I've got a bunch of, a lot of these records I've showed are private press. You can't find them online. They're not even on YouTube. So 
I love having a record that's like, you have to have this record to hear it. But this is a really good record. Um, a lot of it is um, more folk, like, so side B, I believe, is like a more folky rock type thing, but it's still really, really good. And uh, side A is got a more straightforward rock and roll sound. Uh, some, there's some good fuzz rock. There's some good psychedelic uh, elements in here, but uh, yeah, this is this is a really cool record. It's just really interesting, and uh, I love the prop press stuff. You guys know that. So now we're gonna travel on down to Bluesville. Uh, my pet peeve is when people make videos and they drink in the videos. I hate that. But it's early, and I need my coffee. Um, so. Got some blues grails. Uh, these are mega. Uh, the first one right out of the gate, I'll just show you. It's, it's huge. Now, th this let me let me wind a little backstory for you. There's a few blues albums that I really have been wanting over the years that are just absolute grails, tough to find, worth a ton of money. Um, and one of them I've been able to find, and I, you might have recalled this from one of my previous videos. This is Howling Wolf, uh, Moaning in the Moonlight. Um, original first press on chess that black label um this is an amazing record i love howling wolf he's one of my favorite blues guys um and this record is so hard to find in good shape this one's an amazing shape found this i think last year and it's just one of my favorite finds ever i love this record so this is one of those big grails had that for a little while the one that might be a little harder to find even than that one is Howlin' Wolf, self-titled slash people call it the Rockin' Chair album. Uh, this is an original first press on that Black Chess label. Uh, so I don't normally, like, I used to buy records on eBay a lot. Um, and now that I have a shop, I don't ever do it anymore. I, I really don't get on there looking for anything in particular. But occasionally, usually if I'm bored which doesn't happen much, but usually if I'm just kind of hanging out with not much to do, I'll uh, check eBay. I got some some saved filters on there, and I just clicked on a how. But there was one I don't even know. I have a um, filter for Bluesville records, so like uh, I'm trying to collect the whole catalog of Presty's Bluesville stuff, and I'm kind of close. But uh, I have a filter for that, so I check that every once in a while because not a lot pops up with those, but. Uh, somebody had uh, a Bluesville, and I looked at, and I ended up putting that in my cart. I was like, I need that, and it was a great price. And then I looked, I was like, I look at the other items they have for sale, and they had this, and the price on it was just mind-blowingly low. It was insane, and uh, I was like, I'm, gonna, I'm definitely gonna grab that. It was cheap uh, for what it is, and uh, he he said it was VG, so I was like, okay, well, it'll still be playable. I can live with it at that price. That's a phenomenal price, and uh, ended up. Got it in the mail, and he had very generously graded that record. Or no, like it was actually way cleaner than I thought it would be. I would say, I mean, like I would say it would be VG plus or better. Like it is clean. It plays perfect. It don't have a pop or skip or nothing on it. It's it's a very clean copy. So I was very pleased with that. I don't know how that happened. Next one he had that I had to jump on was this one. I've been looking for this forever. If you know me and my blues habits, Lightning Hopkins is. Muddy Waters is my favorite because he's he was the first one I really discovered and started loving. But Lightning Hopkins is probably my new favorite, if I'm being honest. Just his style, the way he plays, he's just, man, he's so cool. If you look up some videos on YouTube of uh, Lightning Hopkins. But he had this uh, Lightning Hopkins record. Light, and it's really cool. A lot of these Folkways come with a booklet of information. Uh, this original Folkways press. That blue label. Really cool stuff. Um, but Folkways, if you don't know, I collect Folkways stuff. I've talked about it a bunch. A lot of Folkways records are really cheap. This one's not. Um, but a lot of Folkways stuff is... It, so Folkways is a label owned by Smith, the Smithsonian Museum. Uh, so it's edu for educational purposes, mostly. So, But there is some dope stuff on there, too. So like, there's some really cool records. Uh, some of them are folk songs. Some of them are banjo songs. I have a Folkways that's from the county I live in, Bluegrass, from you know North Carolina, which is amazing. But there's some really good blues Folkways stuff, too. So Lightning Hopkins, uh, basically, uh, he, he toured around like 40s, 50s a little bit. 
and made some 78s, but then moved back to his hometown and kind of just was laying low. And uh, this the guy that basically was putting this record together went to go find him. And uh, everyone thought that he was in, that White Hopkins was in trouble or something, so they wouldn't tell this guy where he was. And so he went around forever looking for Lightning Hopkins, trying to find him so he could record him. And uh, he said he pulled up to a stoplight one day in, in, in the town he knew um, Hopkins was in. And uh, Lightning Hopkins knocks on his window and says, hey, you looking for me? And he said, yeah. And he's like, hop in. We're, you know. And from there on, he was able to record him and put that album together. And then Lightning Hopkins' career just kind of had a second wave that was probably way bigger than the first one. Or he did a bunch of albums, and that's some of my favorite stuff, those Light and Hopkins albums. Speaking of Light, Light and Hopkins, so you know, you guys, I've talked about this a thousand times. This uh, Light and Hopkins Last Night's Blues is maybe my favorite blues record of all time. This is insanely good. I love this record. Uh, but this is the reissue of it with a different cover. I don't normally do that and buy like a reissue with a different cover, but this one is so good, I had to. This, but the cover's so cool. Um, and it was a cheap enough price where I could justify doing it. But, uh, yeah, that's another one. So all these I got from that guy. i uh, lately also been really getting into uh, Luther Allison. So this is uh, Luther Allison Power Wire Blues. This is a live, uh, live album. Anyways, Luther Allison, I mean, killer guitar player. Um, just this is a really great record. I, I've gotten a couple of his recently, and this one is seriously great. Love that one. Uh, this is the one that drew me in. <laughs> was this Blues in My Bottle, Lightning Hopkins. I did not have an original first press of this. Uh, this has been one that's been kind of tough for me to track down, and this is the, on that Bluesville label. Um, I've got a lot of Bluesville stuff now, uh, which is great. And when I kind of first started, it was kind of crazy. I was like, I'm, not, I'm never going to be able to get all the Bluesville stuff. But I'm like 30 away. There's like 80. So I've got a lot already. But uh, this is one I really needed to com complete that collection. I'm not a compulsive collector like that usually, but every single thing on Bluesville is good. Every single thing on Bluesville is good. Um, there's been a lot of records I'd never heard of, but it was Bluesville, so I bought it, and it blew me away. So that's a label that I absolutely love. There's not one sleeper on it. And this one's another really great one. Like I said, Light and Hobby. Look how cool he is. He's just the coolest person that's ever lived. Uh, this is Arthur Big Boy Crudup. This is some really great blues, original uh, Delmark label. Um, the cover on that is absolutely killer. But uh, yeah, that's another one. I kind of I kind of like him a lot, and I didn't have that one. This is Light and Hopkins Freeform Patterns. So this uh, was originally, uh, this is not a first pressing of it, but this was done with, the, his backing band was 13 Floor Elevators. So that's kind of really cool, and I've been wanting a copy of this. This is a, a pretty good reissue, so I went ahead and grabbed that because it was affordable. So that was the stuff that I got from the blues guy on eBay. I never, like I said, I really don't ever do eBay. But um, when I'm bored and I'm clicking through some stuff, usually sometimes I can find some really good stuff. So uh, this one, Jimmy Buffett, Down to Earth. Um, I don't know if I've shared this or not yet, but I kind of knew that this album was worth some money because I come around a lot you know, Jimmy Buffett stuff all the time, and they're never worth anything. I mean, you know, five bucks tops, you know, for all these... <laughs> Jimmy Buffett cheeseburger in paradise type stuff. I'm not big on that. If you are, more power to you, but I'm not. Um, but I've always been on the lookout for this one because it's worth a lot. And I and, and I, if I see it in a collection or something, I'll pull it out because it's, you know, you got to know what's worth money. So, because I know this one's worth money. And uh, someone brought this in, traded it in, and I was like, I'll throw it on. You know, it's somebody did some red marker on it, and I actually think I might be able to get that off. Uh, sometimes you can get it off. You gotta be careful, but you can get it off with rubbing alcohol and like a cotton swab, but you gotta be careful. If you rub too much, you'll completely destroy the cover. But anyways, that looks like it might be able to come off, but this, um, it's worth, worth a little bit of money, but I put it on and man, this is not a cheeseburger in paradise, Jimmy Buffett. This is really, really good singer songwriter type stuff. Um, and I was blown away by how good it was. It really is good. I really wish he had stayed on this track. But this is, a, this is a great record, so I'd, I'd recommend pulling that one up if you can find it online. Um, this is another one, uh, Ray Barreto, Acid. So this is like a Latin beat record, a lot of hand percussion, but this is killer, funky Latin rhythm. Uh, this is an original mono copy. It's kind of tough to find, but 
Uh, I was thrilled to find this one, um, and and the cover's not great, but the record's in great shape. So that's a that's a really really great. If you like that Latin beat type stuff, this is it's a smoker. Uh, this is another one. I've got so I've got a huge stack of records that um, I'd. I need to listen to, I want to listen to before I sell. So I, that, I, that's, a, that's a constant problem for me. Like if there's something that's really interesting that I've never heard before, I'm going to have to pull it out and listen to it because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a crazy person. But um, this is one that I pulled out that kind of looked pretty cool. Uh, this is Alexander Rabbit, uh, The Hunchback of Notre Dame. This is a, it was a white label promo and it, I don't know, it just kind of looked interesting, but it is better than it looks. <laughs> it doesn't look great, you know, with all the cartoon rabbits and stuff. But this is a really cool record. Uh, some, gr I mean, it's a great psych record. Some really good, just, you know, typical psychedelic elements. Organ, fuzz guitar, all that stuff. But this is a, this is really good. There's a lot of songs on it. Some of the songs are really short. But this is, um, this one I was, I was very surprised how good it was. So I ended up keeping that one. Um, this is another one I found. So I found this a while back. I bought 5,000 records a while back. And uh, this is one that looked pretty interesting to me. Um, it was on that We Produce label. So it, 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 a lot of times that stuff is good. Funk and Soul. And this is really good. Funk and Soul. This is Tempris 3. Most notable track on here is Come and Get Your Love. You know, from Guardians of the Galaxy. If you're young, uh, but yeah, this is a really, it's a really good funky, soulful record. Love it. Uh, this is Leonard songs of Leonard Cohen. This is a first press, uh, really clean first press. I find reissues this all the time, but don't find first pressings that much. So I hold on to that one. Um, this is Miles Davis Sorcerer on this. Uh, I swear this is like 500 gram vinyl, uh, but yeah, that's cool. And I didn't have it, so. Kept it. I love that era of Miles Davis. Uh, Reuben Wilson on Broadway. Uh, Reuben Wilson stuff is is jazz, but it's a, a lot of times like a more funky fusion type jazz. Uh, and I haven't heard this one yet, but I'm stoked to, to get into it. This is uh, Three the Hard Way, the Impressions soundtrack. Um, I love these soundtracks uh, like this. Great, great stuff. And so, saw that one. It's super clean. Picked it up. Uh, Gene Duchon. Make way for Dean, Gene Duchon. Um, this is a, you know, soul singer, a female soul singer. Uh, really good stuff. I was glad to pick that up. It's clean. Uh, Doug Carn's Fear of the New Land. So, man, these Doug Carn records on um, this black jazz label. Pretty much anything on that label is going to be great. Uh, but this Doug Karn record is phenomenal, man. Um, and I also got this one, Revelation. But, yeah, there, this is an amazing record. I, I absolutely love this. So it's, um, I get, uh, some people call it spiritual jazz, but um, it's it's not jazz, really. I mean, it, there's a lot of jazz elements, but it's not jazz like Miles Davis jazz. You know, there's there's vocals involved. Um, and it's a little bit more on the free jazz side, but there's also, um, it, I mean, it, it almost tells a story. It's, it's so good, uh, but it's, um, yeah, it's, it's great. So that's something you kind of have to hear and I can't describe it very well, <laughs> but yeah, Doug Carn with Gene Carn, really good stuff. That's also on black jazz, but, uh, and both of these are quadraphonic i think they came that way the original wrestling are quadraphonic but got both of those they're both in shrink like super clean got an upgrade of uh black man's burden which is is um eric burden from the animals uh this is eric burden in war but this was kind of tough to find uh but uh, the other copy i had was okay but it wasn't great so this one's like mint and i got this y'all know i don't have enough zeppelin in my life uh but this is the houses of the holy 200 gram uh, classic records pressings. I'm, I'm trying to get all the classic records pressings of Led Zeppelin. They're, they're really difficult for me to find. Um, and I actually have one, two, and House of the Holy. Those are the only classic records I have. So if you have any you want to trade, hit me up because I need them. Um, those, um, I really need those. Uh, this is Analog Productions, Idle Moments, uh, Grant Green, my friend Garrison. I talk about him sometimes. 
he brought it in the shop and traded it in, but it's still sealed. Uh, but I love Grant Green stuff, and I actually had a first pressing of this, and someone came in the shop and saw it behind the counter, and they made me an offer I could not refuse. So uh, I've been meaning to treat myself to a reissue. These sound phenomenal. Anything analog productions is insane. Um, a, a few more big ones. So these are Music Matters pressings. Uh, these are very high quality audio file pressings. They go for some good money too. Soul Station, Hank Mobley. This is um, up there with one of my favorite jazz records. Uh, I don't talk about it because I don't have it. I, don't, I haven't been able to find a good pressing of it. And I guess it hasn't really been a priority to me. But this is a really, really, really good pressing of it. I'll be happy with this because first pressings of this go for insane money. I think like over a grand. But um, this is a great record. Soul Station, Hank Mobley. If you're wanting to get started on jazz, this is a really great one to venture into. This is another really great one to venture into. Lee Morgan, The Sidewinder. This is another Music Matters pressing. Really good, high-quality audiophile stuff. And then um, this one, Search for a New Land, uh, Lee Morgan. This one, uh, I found a first pressing of this in New York City, and a friend of mine really needed it, and I was, you know, I was like, well, I'll sell it. So I sold it, and I've been waiting for another good pressing. This is Music Matters pressing. Really good copy. Uh, but thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, hit the subscribe button right there in the middle. Um, if you're not already following us on Instagram, we're always posting new stuff that we find and cool things about records on Instagram. So uh, make sure to follow us on Instagram at Noble Records. I uh, thank you guys so much for watching this video, and uh, we will see you next time.